Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist. The year is 1999. I am in Roma, Italy, the birthplace of Western civilization, with professor of theoretical physics Guido Sandri of Boston University. We are there for the second meeting of the Quaternionic Structures in Mathematics and Physics. There will be no third meeting. Guido was the happiest man I'd ever known, my Italian antidepressant. Still the only person ever with tenure to meet with me regularly over a few years. He loved art and food, but most of all, mathematical physics. He thought something could be done with quaternions. Now, if you don't know, <laughs> quaternions are like numbers you do know. They can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. They are different from numbers that you know because they have four parts, one for time and three others for space. I prefer these days to call them space-time numbers to highlight what I think is their role, to represent events in space-time. I lived in Boston then, maybe two miles from Guido's office, and I owned Quaternions.com since 1997. I forget the details of how we met, but we would talk about art and physics and Quaternions for, I don't know, an hour or so, every month or two. We decided to make this special trip to Roma for two weeks, one for the meeting and one for the Caravaggio's and other art in the churches and museums. We always took out time to talk about mathematical physics. I asked him about complex analysis, something that had to be extended with grace to quaternion analysis. He privately tutored me on the topic. Now that's not nearly enough time to understand the subject, but he did communicate to me some of the very deep insights. I recall one story about complex numbers. He said he got into a brutal debate with two full professors at BU who said that the only definition of a complex conjugate is that the second number, the imaginary, had its sign flipped. And I nodded. <laughs> That's the only way I'd ever learned it. Guido said that def is the definition on the manifold R2, two copies of real numbers. Well, being naive, I said, isn't that the only manifold? Now, <laughs> he gave out a big chuckle. No, there's the complex manifold C1. There is no second number to make negative because the structure of complex numbers is maintained on that manifold. A complex number hangs together quite literally as one number. The conjugate operator has two properties. First, do it two times in a row and you're back to the start. And second, if you do the conjugate to the dot product, it is identical to doing the conjugate uh, to each one separately, so long as the order is reversed. Now, that struck me as a profound idea. A complex number needs to be viewed as one structure. I was taught the traditional way. Staple two real numbers together and do unusual things. <laughs> no, a complex number is one thing that is born with unusual properties. So using Z and the conjugate Z star, and anything done on R2 can be done on the complex manifold C1. Of course, I had my area of specialty, so I asked him how we could do the same trick for quaternions with their four parts. Now, Q and Q star are not going to be enough, he said he didn't know. <laughs> well, this is a problem I call bullet aimed at the head. If there wasn't a way to do everything possible on the R4 manifold, four copies of the real numbers, 
Also on the space-time manifold H1, where there was just one quaternion hanging together with all of its structure, then the entire research project takes a bullet to the head and I would have to report the failure. It was time to do a calculation. <laughs> now, how could I do a variation on the conjugate? What happened if I pre and post multiply by a factor of i? So it goes i q i star. Well, i commutes with i and the scalar. And so you could rearrange that. And i squared is negative 1. So the commuting parts, well, they both flip signs and are negative. Oh, but then the conjugate flips the x once more. So the first two terms are minus t plus x. The terms that do not commute, that'd be the y and the z, get to deal with two factors of i on either side. Now, i times y brings y to k without changing sign. And then k times i brings it back to j again without changing sign. Now, the sign flips twice for the z term. So you get a plus y and a plus z. Oh, and then you take the conjugate. So the final result is minus t plus x minus y minus z. And I called this the first conjugate. A conjugate has one thing positive and the other three negative. Now, how cute is that? <laughs> there was, a, of course, a second conjugate. That would be j q j star. And that flips all the signs but y. Of course, there is a third conjugate. But it is not really necessary. With the conjugate, the first conjugate, the second conjugate, and multiplying by minus 1, the third conjugate can be constructed. In fact, any function on the manifold R4 can be done on H1 now. Here's the full set of four conjugates. I confess to feeling proud of that result. It was short, cute, and fitted the need perfectly. But what does it mean physically? Well, these are space-time operations, so we do have to think about time. Time is ignored in discussions of rotations and reflections. It is always presented all about space, space, space. Yet every transformation in space-time uses up some time. Nothing is instantaneous. Now, mathematics is designed by people. They get to set the rules. Mathematicians are very precise in how they set these rules. If they want to create rules about rotations in three dimensions of space, they are allowed to do so. There is nothing wrong with that. Now, I do mathematical physics. Mathematical physics is a subfield of mathematics. Here, all the math should be linked to measurable physical phenomena. Now, these physical phenomena are subject to experimental testing. Can I do a rotation in 3D space? Of course you can. Hmm. Can I do a rotation in space that everyone agrees on? Nope. Special relativity says that in the right reference frame, a rotation in space can use only numbers for the changes in space. But someone coming by on a skateboard would see all that rotation as involving both changes in 3D space and changes in time. Now, there are many works out there where the parameters are W, X, Y, and Z, where W stands for whatever, like we don't care. <laughs> Here I'm stating clearly that I'm thinking about T, X, Y, Z, where the T really does stand for time. So, start with the right hand, which is fortunately continuing to exist in time. My hand is still there, my hand is still there, and my hand keeps adding more history of time that it was there. Now, the standard conjugate does nothing with time, but all three directions in space flip signs. 
So I will build an animated model of this with my left hand. Oh, this is actually an ordinary rotation around a plane mirror. The plane is between my two middle fingers here. Anything in the plane stays the same. Up is still up, forward is still forward. What changes signs is the in versus the out. Now watch as I slowly go to an, from an ordinary plane mirror to a point mirror. And reflections are smooth. But a conjugate only counts at the moment when x is minus x and y is minus y and z is minus z. And I've known about this finger representation of conjugates like for a decade. <laughs> and as I was working for the script on this very video, I said, I got to find the re finger representation of the first, second, and third conjugates. Does it exist? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I stared at my hands. Okay. Um, now, my left hand was willing to flip the sign one time and three signs, but flipping only two, um, no, that would involve cutting off a finger. <laughs> Could my left hand help on this project with my right hand to figure this out? And I realized, well, what if I grab my index finger with my left hand here and now twist? Ha! Huh, look at that. So two fingers change signs and the other is fixed. Um, but there's one more change to do. Time changes sign. And what does a time reversal look like? Well, if there's a start state and an end state, and that means that you would go from the end state to the start state. Hmm. So a combination of two spatial flips and a time reversal brings you right back to the start. And look, I have other fingers that I can do exactly the same sort of thing. Two spatial flips and a time reversal. And that brings us back to the start. Notice I really only use my right hand for this one. That, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Now, symmetries are one of the most important things to understand in fundamental physics, based on Emmy Noether's theorem, which connects symmetries to conservation laws. Symmetries by time translation are also about conservation of energy. Symmetries under spatial translation is linear momentum conservation, and symmetries under rotation is angular momentum conservation. So, what known conservation laws are related to this family of discrete conjugate symmetries? The position in space changes, just like what happens with rotations. But the sign flips are exact, so this is a discrete symmetry. I think the conjugate is the symmetry for integer angular momentum in quantum mechanics, also known as spin. It is like a rotation, but it is necessarily discrete. Photons have spin one symmetry, and that is related to the conjugate. There is another kind of spin in quantum mechanics, half integer spin. And I think the first and second conjugates are the symmetries underlying half integer conservation laws. Now, Emmy Noether's theorem arises in a very technical context. Symmetries in a Lagrangian when using the calculation of variations to derive field equations. Well, I've been able to derive the four Maxwell equations using real valued space-time number derivatives, potentials, and current densities. I have taken that derivation and then used the conjugate on the derivative, the potential, and the current density, and nothing changed. <laughs> the four Maxwell equations return exactly as before. Now, the first and second conjugates can also work in the derivation of the four Maxwell equations, 
if the definition of the electric and magnetic field in terms of changing potentials are changed. And that's kind of interesting. I think Guido would be beaming at this result if it really pans out.